Alright, we have another GY6 scooter video. In this video, I'm going to show you exactly how you can adjust the valve clearances on your GY6 scooter. My scooter is a 150cc scooter. Now, this procedure should be done every 500 to 1,000 miles to ensure that your engine is running at its best. If you have problems with hard starting or other performance issues, it's very possible that your valves could be either too tight or too loose and just not set properly. So in this video, I will show you in a step-by-step -step fashion exactly how to adjust those valve clearances. Now when you remove the valve cover, there's an O-ring, and that O-ring is actually a ripoff for a Chinese scooter. They look to charge you for like $10 for an O-ring that seals the cover. So the thing to do is you're going to have some either the blue sealant or the red high temperature silicone sealant. And in the event that your O-ring is squished and you're starting to leak a little oil, like mine, each time I check my valves, I put a thin layer over the valve cover with the O-ring and then I bolt it back down and that problem is solved. This $4 tube of silicone will last me probably 50 times of checking my valve clearance. And that's pretty much all you need and just a rag. Alright, the first step, you're going to put your scooter on the center kickstand, which is right there sticking up. This is the center kickstand for people that don't know and just bought the scooter and they want to learn how to do these things, that's your center kickstand. So I'm going to put this on the center kickstand and then go to the next step. Once the scooter has been placed on the center kickstand, the next step is to remove the seat. That's very simple. I'm just going to unlock it, lift up the seat. Right here is a 10 millimeter bolt. Take that bolt off, slide this pin out and remove the seat. Now once the seat has been removed, the next step is to remove the two screws at the top. There's one right here, and then there's one on the opposite side. Once you remove both screws, there are two more screws located at the bottom. You go, you follow the cover down, and right in front of the cover, right about here, under the mat, there's one bolt, and over here, there's another bolt. So you're going to unscrew that one, and that one. Once you remove both of these screws and the top, you grab this whole plastic piece that wraps around the front and it slides up and then it pops off. Alright, now that the screws are off, you just gently pull this plastic out from under the basket on both sides like that. Carefully just pull it out, saves you from pulling this basket out. Now you're going to lift up on the whole piece like that and pull it away. And the same on that side, up, tip it forward, and lift it up and out. Once the cover has been removed, you will then have full access. This right here is your intake manifold. Inspect that, make sure the bolts are tight, make sure there's no cracks. You can also pop off your spark plug boot and take out your spark plug and give that a cleaning. Put a little bit of sandpaper, maybe 600 grit between the contacts readjust the gap and reinstall it and you also want to check to make sure your hoses aren't dried out or cracking now I take very long trips sometimes a hundred miles round trip so when I got the scooter brand new I threw away all the rubber lines all over the engine and I replaced them with gates and Goodyear hoses the hoses that come with the scooter are pretty cheap and they dry rot and fall apart now all the adjusting is going to be done behind this cover now to remove that cover, these are 8 millimeter bolts, there's 1, 2, 3, 4, and then you have 2 for this pipe going around, 8 millimeter, loosen each one up, I must have had this cover off about 15 times in the last 4 years that I have this. Once they're loose, then you could use a nut driver. Alright. 
Now there's very little oil behind this cover. You may want to place a rag under this cover in case a couple of drips come out. That driver. Place all the bolts to the side. To the next one. I can see my gasket's leaking a little bit. So I'll put the new sealant on it and that'll be taken care of. And the two remaining ones on the pipe. Be careful, there's a gasket between this metal plate and the head. Try not to damage it, save it. Now the two bolts that hold this pipe down are smaller than the four that hold the cover. So just put the two aside that are smaller for this chromed flange here. Okay, see the cover's coming off. I don't see any oil coming out. That's good. Now, remove this clamp with your pliers. Okay, just tuck that hose up out of the way like that. And now you just take it, take this, and you're going to push it all the way off to the side out of the way like that. Now if you want, you can put a bungee cord on here and just pull it out of the way. You have your timing chain right here. The camshaft is the gear that the chain is attached to, which is pushing on these rocker arms. This is your adjusting screws that we will be adjusting. There's a nut here and one at the bottom. You have your valve springs and retainers. This is the intake and this is the exhaust. Now before you could adjust anything, what you're going to have to do is rotate the engine into the proper position so that both of these valves are in the closed position. To do that, we will have to go to the cooling fan located on the other side of the scooter. All right, this is the cooling fan. You're going to pop off this plug like that. Now in order to rotate the engine, there's a plastic nut on the fan and a 6.13 millimeter socket will fit right in there. Just make sure it's pushed all the way in and onto that nut. Reach in, push it in tight, and then you could turn, and you can see the. All right, there's a, that's a magnet. I'm gonna show you where the mark is where it says T. Now the line that you want to line up is right where this white mark is. I painted the line white. That's the T, and that's the line, and then there's an F with a line. So the the one you're looking for is a T and the line below it. Now inside this hole, in the hole and down towards this bolt right here, so in and behind the plastic by this bolt, there's going to be a piece of aluminum that's sticking straight out towards the flywheel. You're going to have to line up this white mark, which is the T line, right in line with that piece of metal, that protrusion that sticks out. All right. You can barely make it out, but you see on the left side of the hole is that little straight edge sticking out. That's what you're looking to line up. You want that to line up exactly with the T line on the flywheel. Now once you rotate the engine into this position, the T line should kind of fall into place in this spot where it's supposed to be. If it doesn't and there's a lot of compression, that means you have to rotate one more revolution to get it to the right place. Now to confirm that you have it in the right position, we're going to go to the valves and check those. Now if this is properly set up, these should wiggle. Yep. That's wiggling. And that one moves. If both of these are tight and they don't move, just rotate the engine one more revolution to the mark where the T is and then it should be fine. Now the other way to tell if you have the flywheel in the right position with the T line there's a hole right in the camshaft gear, a very large hole. 
Make sure that hole, the large opening in the gear of the camshaft is exactly between this bolt and that bolt. Then you'll know you're in the right position. As long as that large hole is there, you're good to go. This is the feeler gauge, the 005. Coat this with a little bit of oil. So then you want to check by sliding it back and forth like so. And you want light to moderate drag. I'm going to loosen the nut using an 11 seconds quarter inch socket. Put it right on there. And just pull this way. And that's loose. Now to adjust, once the outer nut is loose, then you could slowly rotate the square head here. See it's too tight, it's not moving now. Too loose. That's just the right amount. Now what happens when you go to tighten this, it's a little bit of a pain in the ass when you go to, even though you set this perfectly here, all right? Right there, light drag, all right? Even though that's set perfectly, as soon as you tighten the outer nut, it's going to want to rotate the middle a little bit. Now there's two ways. The first way you can hold this with the needle nose, and more than likely that will move in the process of holding it, affecting the gap. And then you'd grab an 11 30 seconds or a 9 millimeter open end wrench and go on to the nut and then tighten it down. Now that's one way of doing it. Now I do it by hand. I don't use the needle nose. So I'm going to turn this by hand until I feel a little bit of drag. Right there, very little. And I'm going to turn the outside nut. See, it's very loose. But what's going to happen when I get this socket and I start tightening it, this is going to get tighter. So if it gets too tight, I'm just going to loosen it again, back off a hair on the inner part, and then retighten again. So let me see how far off I am on this right now. If it's too loose, back off a little bit. Grab your needle nose. Turn it just a hair like that, and then tighten again. Should be just right. And there you go. That's perfect. Light, moderate drag. I've been doing it so long this way with just using the socket wrench and turning it by hand that it doesn't really phase me anymore. Rather than use the open end and then holding that with the needle nose, you could do it either way as long as you get the clearance just right. Now I'm going to take a look at the bottom one. This one here. It's got light drag. So I'm going to leave that one alone. If it was too tight, I would loosen the nut and back off on the center and then tighten the nut again. Or if it was too loose, I'd loosen the nut and tighten the inside. So we're at 005. Now once you do this, once you do both, it's a good idea to rotate the engine of two full revolutions to the same spot again and double check it. Once that's finished, clean anything off of this face here, make it nice and clean. Once I apply the silicone sealer to all these edges over the O-ring, I will then allow it to tack up for five minutes and then reassemble the valve cover. Once you have reinstalled the valve cover, you can then reinstall the plastic that covered here and you can put the seat back on and you're good to go. Remember to check every 500 to 1,000 miles your clearances.